Hello Wolfpack, welcome back to a general market update. I'm going to start doing these general market updates. I've been mainly prioritizing um, altcoin videos in the last couple of months that I've been running this YouTube channel, and that's due to the fact that I think that the upcoming uh, altcoin season is going to be massive, but I think we do need some clarity in the markets, at least now, at least for the next couple of weeks. Uh, and for that reason, I'm going to be doing you know, as many general market updates as possible because I can get way more information out uh, in a video than I can on my Telegram groups. Uh, if you're not really following those Telegram groups, I do post multiple updates per day on the market. Um, so if you find yourself, you know, ever struggling to understand what's going on in terms of charts, make sure to join that group. It's completely free. Uh, and yeah, so that should be good. Um, but we're going to be looking into Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, and also the stock market and also some potential buy-in ranges for Bitcoin uh, in this video. We're looking at Bitcoin dominance as well. So we're covering quite a few topics. Uh, I might be incorporating uh, some things like ADA and Solana or like whatever the hot coins are in these general market updates uh, at some point in the future. But I'm going to make it a weekly thing. I do one general market update per week. Uh, I might have a name for it at some point. I don't know. Uh, you know, even by the time this video is out, I might have some sort of name for it, but it's going to be some sort of series that I do. So let's get into it. Uh, we'll look at the short term of Bitcoin right now. I'm running the hourly chart. Uh, so obviously, as everyone would know already, we saw that drop down. That's that's not you know new news. That's pretty old. We dropped down massively uh, from like 48k down to this zone here. Uh, we scalped it like 40k a few times. Uh, we saw a double bottom, but we did see a brief wick below here to the 39.5k region, which was basically just a panic wick in my opinion. I don't, I don't think it actually meant anything. Um, but ultimately, we held the zone for support, which is our critical zone. We've been calling for this retest for a while. So so it's great to see it actually happen because this is going to lead to a bullish future for crypto uh, in the next couple of months. And even, even into the next year, if we see lengthening cycles, it's up for debate. Uh, Four-year cycle theory would say in the next few months at least. Um, and since that point, we've headed into an upwards trend. We've been in an upwards trend for about two days now, about 48 hours. Uh, we have formed and we broke out of this symmetric triangle here uh, and we formed this ascending channel, which is typically a bullish structure uh, that we would hopefully be seeing a break to the upside, but we do have options expiry quite soon. I'm going to mark out where options will be expiring. I think it should be around here. I mean, Australia, some time zones a bit different, uh, but that red line, so you know, the next five or six hours, options uh, should be expiring expiring options contracts basically what i've determined from that i've looked into the options contracts expiry and essentially what i'm looking at is there is incentive for uh the whales and the market manipulators to keep the price below 46k uh, let me draw that a bit better below 46k uh in this time period so in this time period here i don't think we're gonna be seeing a pump in fact I think we might actually be seeing a drop, and I think we've already started to see that. Uh, we've retested the top of this channel just in the last couple of hours. By the time this video gets out, you guys will probably already know the answer. Uh, this drop down currently um, might actually be the drop down, and I think that we'll probably go um, down here to the 100 SMA, potentially down uh, in the low 43Ks. But that's not necessary. I mean, it could happen. Uh, I think that... It's not 100% necessary, so we could just be staying in this ascending channel, and you know that would be a bullish scenario in which we just bounce back up. And once options options expire, uh, we should be seeing less incentive for the bears to keep the price down in terms of manipulation, uh, and then a spike up here to you know in the 46k region, which would be great. Um, I do want to keep in mind here. I do want you guys to remember that we are kind of overextended in the short term. And you have to remember, uh, it may not seem like it because we're still so far down from when we started. But in the last two or three days, uh, we're up, you know, 10 to 15, maybe not 15, but 10 to 12 percent. So we have moved quite significantly in a short period of time, and we are starting to see some bearish indicators play out, such as a bearish divergence on the hourly RSI, in which we're seeing kind of flat uh, price movements and a downwards trend on the RSI. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, and you know, you should be watching that. So we could be seeing short-term corrections, as I just said, uh, you know, it's not 100% guaranteed, but what we can guarantee is if we look at the hourly chart here, uh, and this gives us a more precise view on what's going to happen because short-term price action, uh, you know, you can look in it, into it a lot and, you know, that's fine. That's all well and good. But at the end of the day, um, you're just weighing up probabilities. Uh, when you look at the macro scale, you can see a bit more um, of certainties. And this isn't even a macro scale, in my opinion. This is just my year. I've looked at the macro charts in my last two videos. Make sure to check those out uh, if you want to see a full macro view on Bitcoin throughout its lifespan. But on the daily chart for this year, what we can see is it's not actually um, 
looking too bad, you know, and a lot of people would say, well, well, of course it is, we're seeing massive rounding outs, and we'll address that later in the video, we'll address the ver bearish argument towards the end of this video, but we can see that, um, you know, we're holding the 100 SMA for support here. We've bounced straight off that. Uh, the bull market support band, which is actually around this region now, we held that for support. We bounced straight off of it. We saw a bullish engulfing candle um, bouncing off straight off those support zones. And logically, the next move for us here is to continue the upwards trend uh, until we face some resistance for some of our short-term MAs. Uh, and at that region, we'll probably be looking at a bullish MACD cross as well to help give us some uh, extra upwards momentum. The big thing I am looking at on the uh, daily chart that I want to be um, you know, letting you guys know of. And again, we'll look into the bearish scenario towards the end of the video, but just one quick thing, and this is the most important thing in my opinion, is the bearish divergence on the RSI uh, that we have been seeing for a while. We also have a bullish divergence uh, in which we headed up um, and the RSI trended downwards, but this bearish divergence uh, is very strikingly similar to the one we saw throughout the entire year. Uh, you can see that. I'll, I'll just try to draw it again here. Throughout the entire like seven month period until we broke out in July, um, we saw a bearish divergence and I think people are reacting stronger to this one because they're getting kind of PTSD and those moves do look similar. Um, but yeah, we'll look into that at the end of the video. Um, so we look fine in terms of that. And yeah, as you can see as well, but there's actually a really strong reason, um, you know, why we bounced in this region. I think people just kind of put it up to luck that we just kind of got out unscathed, uh, you know, bouncing off this support zone here. But it's really not, uh, it's not luck. You know, we had structured support uh, in that 40K region. We have a test of 40K here, here. We have one here as well. We have one here as well, here as well. We had one where we broke through over here. If you want to count that, you can. I'm going to count it. And then we bounced off there. So we've had like, you know, six retests of that zone uh, in the last year. So to say that it was a coincidence that we bounced off 40K, and that's what I'm getting a lot of the bears saying uh, on Twitter and stuff like that. It's like, well, we should have dropped through 40K. That wasn't even a strong support zone. It's like, yes, it was. I mean, all you have to do is look at the volume profile as well to notice that where does this massive spike in buying come from? Well, it starts at 40K. Uh, and the reason we dropped so quickly from like around uh, 44K to 40K is because we had a massive empty zone on the volume profile, which signifies the fact that we haven't been trading in that region for a long time, and hence there's not enough, uh, you know, support or resistance in that area. It's kind of the unknown. But what we do know is that 40k is a very strong region for support, and if we lose 40k, uh, I think we're going to be in a bit of trouble here on Bitcoin. But I don't think that's going to happen, you know, and. I'll stick by the cyclical theory and I'll stick by what I've said in previous videos. I don't think that's going to happen, but on the occasion that it does, we have to be prepared for it. Um, if we look at Ethereum briefly, and I will say that we're recording this video in a bit of a correction right now. So I think that correction of what I said, yeah, we've dropped uh, past that ascending tr uh, channel here. So we might be seeing a break below. Um, you know, in the next few hours, but that's that's completely normal price action options expiry is coming, as I said, so I wouldn't be taking the next few hours too seriously. Um, but as we see here on Ethereum, we see a very similar uh, kind of um, viewpoint here in which we bounced from this structured support zone again that we have. It's not a coincidence. We have a structured support zone at 2,650. And then also we close the daily candle above the 100 SMA and above the bull market support band here on Ethereum. So we saw a very, very, very nice close uh, and bullish engulfing candles followed that up. Right now, what we actually could be seeing here on this daily candle you know, again, we broke through that th uh, 3K resistance um, and we're seeing potentially a flip of it and hopefully to the upside in the coming days. Again, options expire. We will drag them on the market, but I'm not too worried about that right now. Um, so we look at Ethereum as well. Again, we have a bearish divergence on Ethereum, similar to Bitcoin. In fact, Ethereum looks basically identical to Bitcoin in the current state of the market, I will say that. Um, and similarly, we have this MACD cross that we will be expecting within the next couple of weeks if we see that upwards trend. So... Bitcoin dominance is something I want to talk about briefly before we get into uh, our targets for Bitcoin and some of the bearish scenarios as well and why I'm not buying fully back into the market just yet. Um, Bitcoin dominance, we are seeing very, very regular price movements. Um, well, it's, I guess it's not really a price. Very, very regular movements on Bitcoin dominance. For those of you who don't know what Bitcoin dominance is, it's basically a measure that measures the percentage of wealth in cryptocurrency, the percentage of capital in the whole cryptocurrency market that is in Bitcoin uh, as, a as a percentage versus altcoins. Currently, the Bitcoin dominance chart says 419 What that means is that 41.9% of all the money in crypto is in Bitcoin. 
Now, when we see an old coin season, what we're actually seeing is the Bitcoin dominance dro chart dropping to lows, which represents uh, a, a more percentage of money uh, in the cryptocurrency market is in old coins of the Bitcoin, and hence uh, old coins are outperforming Bitcoin because that is dropping actively. That's what we saw here in 2018. Uh, during this drop here in Bitcoin dominance, old coins were pumping and Bitcoin was stagnating, hence we saw an old coin season. And we reached a percentage of around 35% in the last bull market. Um, the current Bitcoin dominance chart, we're seeing a little pump here, a little bounce. Um, and we saw that, you know, nothing's ever straight down from this last bull market. We saw two of these little bounces, actually, and we saw one down here as well. Um, so as you can see, we saw two little bounces, and then we finally bottomed out here in January. I won't be expecting too much different to that. If anything, you know, I think we could go a little bit higher from this region, um, you know, as Bitcoin makes this run up, because Bitcoin hasn't moved yet. When Bitcoin makes its moved to that, like, 100k region, um, you know, in the coming months, I think Bitcoin dominance will jump up a bit possibly to the top of this support zone 51 percent who knows and then ultimately it will drop down and all coin season will um kind of prevail and all coins will start to pop off so you know all in all here i'm expecting a little bounce before a big drop and where we could go on that drop well i'm expecting it to be lower than where we went on 2017 uh on 2017 2018 all coin season there's not really much uh analysis you can do in terms of price predictions on the bitcoin dominance chart there's just really not much data available and it's not really that easy to do because to analyze the bitcoin dominance chart you have to analyze literally the entire state of the market um so that's kind of an, a rough, rough, rough prediction. I'm expecting it to go lower. And the reason why I'm expecting it to go lower to 25% instead of 35%, which is its all-time low, is because this whole chart uh, is in a downtrend. And naturally, there's more old coins coming into the market every day. There's probably 10 times the amount of old coins as there was in 2017, 2018. So it would make sense for the money to be more spread out in this bull market. I've seen people say that it would go as low as 10%. So I don't think 25% is a very... Um, you know, overconfident prediction. I think that's just a rough, you know, kind of number that I see it going to. Potentially a psychological support, 25, I don't know. Something like that, I'm definitely expecting it to go lower than 35%, that is for sure. Um, the bearish scenario on Bitcoin, all right? And in order to get into this, I want to get into the stock market because a lot of the facts, you know, a lot of the people who are calling for a bearish scenario on Bitcoin are saying that the stock market is going to be crashing. I've got the SPX, the S&P 500 here, the American, basically, Basically, you can just say this is the American stock market, right? Uh, it's an index of the top 500 country, companies in America. Um, and, you know, we can see we're in this massive, just, you know, continued upwards trend. I could probably just draw out some sort of channel here uh, ever since COVID. And we haven't dropped below that at all. And, then, you know, COVID, you know, the COVID crash was in March last year. It's been almost 18 months since that point. We're still going upwards. So I can see why people are concerned. I can see why people are concerned. But honestly, this chart looks like it's going to crash you know, every single second in history. Look at look at these upwards trends we have here on the S and P. We have massive upwards trends. You know, massive, massive upwards trend where everyone's calling for a crash because it just acts so abnormally. All right, we had one from January 2016 all the way into October 2018. All right, that's that's over two and a half years. Okay, and right now we're seeing an 18 month one. Uh, I just don't think it's much of a problem. We had one back here all the way from September 2011 all the way to July 2015. So I think that predicting what the S&P 500 is going to do is quite a, quite you know counterproductive. I think you should use your time doing other things because at the end of the day, this is such a manipulated uh, you know index. It's so manipulated. You know, this is direct influence from uh, you know the, the the Federal Reserve printing massive, massive amounts of dollars every single day and just flooding it into the market to keep the stocks up so people are happy um, at the expense of the US dollar. So I don't like looking at the general stock market. Obviously, when the stock market goes up, Bitcoin tends to go up. When it goes down, Bitcoin goes down. But I don't see a massive crash happening very soon. Even if I did, I wouldn't be, you know, counting on it because it's just, it's known for these massive over, um, you know, overvaluations, uh, massive upwards trends. I think it's kind of, as I said, a bit counter logical, a bit counterproductive to predict that it's going to crash uh, because, you know, let's be real. It's looked like it's going to crash ever since bloody, it's in bloody inception. You know what I mean? Let's, let's scroll back here. When does this thing look like it's not going to crash since 2009, right? It, the, the trend is ridiculously highly up, right? And, you know, the cryptocurrency bull market's going to be ending, in my opinion, in the next, you know, anywhere between the next three to six months. So I'm not going to sell everything I have to, you know, in the, in the small chance that this is going to drop in the next three to six months when it's been going up ever since 2009. It just doesn't seem logical to me. Um, I could be wrong, though. You know, do your own research. 
And Bitcoin's dropping quite heavily here, and, and as I expected at the start of this video, we've literally, in the time that I've been recording this, we're seeing that retest of the 100 SMA right now. Whether that will hold or not, uh, you know, it's a big question, but regardless, you know, options expiry, I'm not I'm not worried at all about what happens in the next five hours, because this is just complete, uh, you know, overly volatile price action due to this expiry. Um, when that's over, we can start to look into what's happening. Uh, you know, honestly, this could go to 40k for all I care in the next five hours. wouldn't matter to me at all because this volatility is, you know, as to be expected. Um, but the bearish scenario on the long-term chart on Bitcoin daily chart. Uh, we can see that the whole logical bearish move, in my opinion, and this is this is the bearish move that I think is logical based on reality, right? Every single other bearish argument, in my opinion, is not based in reality. This one is based in reality. It's the fact that this whole entire region here from January to May looks very similar to this entire region here that we've been seeing in the last few months. Very valid, very, very valid to say. However, we have you know, what we can compare here is when we see this drop down in May, it was a straight drop down. Right now we're seeing a bullish engulfing candle and a pump up. The more we pump, the more invalidated this whole uh, six zone here. We see this consolidation downwards uh, in the 30k region. The, the more we go up, the more invalid that becomes. I've got a few price targets uh, for Bitcoin here that I will say on this chart. And this is why, guys, I've been saying, you know, this is still a possibility that we drop down, right? It's a possibility. I'm not going to say it's not going to happen. That's why I'm being slightly cautious. If you're part of the Telegram group, you know that I'm being slightly cautious. I said, this is what I said in the Telegram group, okay? I said, once we retake 44.5, we should do small buy-ins, okay? And we retook 44.5. So I said small buy-ins at 44.5. That's our key level. We can tick that. We are dropping below it right now, but it's options contracts expiry. That's to be expected, okay? In my opinion, that's to be expected. All right, our second level that we said is 48.5, all right? And we can see 48.5 is our second level, and that's where I said medium buy-ins, okay? So 48.5, we're looking to overtake that. Once we take 48.5, I'm going to think that this whole entire bearish argument is invalidated because we didn't see in the May correction Bitcoin go down a little bit and then pump back up to where it was. No, we saw straight downwards, Okay. So in my opinion, once we take 48.5, this whole bearish argument is invalidated, but I'm still going to say medium buy-ins. I'm going to give it the benefit of doubt. There's no point being overly uh, risky when you're in a market that can 10x in a couple of weeks, okay? It's just not, it's not logical, all right? Just be conservative. You know, this market is risky enough. You know, there's already enough gains. You don't need to get in 5 to 10% earlier. It's really not necessary, especially in the next few months when the market's going to go parabolic, in my opinion. And the third zone, and this is a zone that I said that I'm personally, and you know, you guys can if you want to, not financial advice. You can listen to me though if you want to. It's my personal opinion that at 33, at 53K, sorry, when we flip this entire construction, okay, 53K, when we flip this entire construction, that's when I'm going to be fully entering the market uh, with 100% of my capital um, that I'm willing to be invested in cryptocurrency because from that region, I think it's very, very, very unlikely that we do not run to at least all-time highs, if not to 100K. All right, so 53K is the ultimate region. Uh, 48.5K and 44.5K are regions to keep your eyes on. That's my personal opinion. Uh, right now, as of current, uh, don't be too confident unless we take those zones back. Because we are still in a bit of a danger zone, right? We are pretty close to 40k. We're in striking range of 40k. That's where we really want to be holding. Although I think it will hold, although the cyclical theory says it will hold. Be conservative, guys. You know, there's no point, as I said, rushing in to get in 5% earlier, uh, you know, and then risk holding for a three-year bear market when you can just buy when it's confirmed. You know, cop the lost. Buy 5% higher. Who really cares in the long run? Are you going to care that you bought 5% higher when your coin 10x is? I won't. I personally won't. That's my personal opinion anyway. But those are the key zones. And, you know, 53K and 48.5K, that's going to invalidate the whole bearish argument, in my opinion. And those are zones that I'm particularly interested in. 44.5K, I only recommend, you know, only recommended small buys in that area. And that's just because of what we're seeing right now, right? The reason why I said small buys, once we crossed this region, I mean, I mean, we barely crossed it. We kind of failed to hold it for support. We've only crossed it for like less less than a daily candle. Um, but, you know, we dropped down. And that's what I said, small buy-ins, because it's a risky area still. But once we start clearing these higher areas, that's when you need to be a bit more confident. All right, guys, that's been the market update. Um, let me know if you want me to cover 
you know, anything else in these market updates. As I said, ADA is a potential. It's the third coin, you know, and ADA has got a pretty big fan base as well. So I might be covering ADA or potentially some of the top 10 coins or the big movers in the market for that week. But this has been the first video of a general market update in like a structured format. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave some recommendations down below. Uh, thanks, and I'll catch you in the next one.